Alright. Yes, I just tried it up, or started it but yesterday to figure out where I should put all the camera and chat. But let's start again from the beginning. Ah. This ship has exploded. Uh, how is look sensitivity? Seems reasonable. There's a pilot back from your pre launch camp under the stars, I see. So it's launch day. Seems like only yesterday you joined the space program, and suddenly here you are, leaving on your first solo voyage. That's me. What do you say? Ready to get this beauty off the ground? It's all fueled up and ready to go. You sure you fixed the retro rockets? That was only a problem one time, and then maybe a few times after that, but hey, no reason to dwell on the past, right? Anyway, you'll need to get the launch codes from Hornfells at the observatory before you can lift off. Just bring those here once you said your goodbyes or whatever. Alright, alright. Oh, now that I've started doing that, let me uh, just do a quick little bit of alerting. <laughs> Because, you know, it's not like I could do things in, in a, a sensible order when starting the stream. We have a ship. Looks like that. Uh, that's right. You want me to go to Hornfells? Alright. What's my mission once I'm in space? Hey, you're the pilot. You tell me. Aren't you pilot types all eager to get up there and explore for yourselves? Doesn't matter if you go to the moon or Brittle Hollow or just the other side of Timber Hearth. It's all the same to me. Get up there and have fun. Just don't hurt the ship. That's all I ask. Oh, let's some marshmallow. Oh, shit. Bye. There you go. Oh. I'll take it. Maybe one more. Let's try to get it. When I do marshmallows, I usually... I don't even want the outside to caramelize, typically. I just kind of want them to become slightly gooey. Kind of like that, I guess. Alright, we have a bed. Uh, those are the launch codes I don't have. It's a really weird jump to hold and release for jump. If I do tap, I just get like a short hop. Micah. Hey, it's you. Slate said you're blasting off in your ship today. I'm really excited to see the launch. Aren't you going to go into space? I, I assume so for launching. <laughs> Aren't you? You better not have changed your mind. Uh, I want to practice with a pro before I leave. Ah, uh, you're just saying that. But if you really want to practice with me, I guess I could help you out a little. Try to land in one of the geyser pools. Show me what you've got. Uh, okay. Up and down thrust. Oh boy. <laughs> Bam. Does that count? I doubt it. I didn't do it. Alright. What a landing! I guess that's why Slate lets you fly the real thing, huh? 
can't tell if she's being sarcastic. I say she. I have no particular basis for any of the genders here. Ah, Porphy making delicious keg soup. That was on my hands. Oh, I can see me. I am also one of these aliens. Hey, oh, hatchling. Huh? I'm young. I hear you're leaving us to seek adventure amongst the stars. When you return, let's you, me, and Gossen open up a bottle of the good stuff. <laughs> the good stuff is less delicious sap wine and a more daunting digestive challenge. An iron stomach is the mark of a true Harthian, my friend. I assume that's us, the Harthians. Our hardy hunter-gatherer lifestyle stems from trial and error, by which I mean our ancestors survived eating a lot of bad things. It doesn't inspire confidence. Can we open doors? Nope. Okay. Not that door, at least. Postcards from Orbit. Retire. You're actually blasting off in that thing, huh? They really don't explode as often anymore. <laughs> yeah. All I know is between the space program and Micah's model rockets, things seem to burn to the ground around here more than they used to. Could give him an older voice. <laughs> Are you going to watch the launch? Of course. I'll be watching from a safe distance, obviously. And mostly to make sure nothing catches fire. But watching nonetheless. This pilot seat, used by pioneering astronaut Feldspar, is all that remains of our inaugural flight into space. Although it's been argued such a distinction requires a breathtakingly liberal definition of flight, that day will nevertheless always be remembered as a landmark achievement in Harthian history. Good old Feldspar. Right, we have a... Like, is this a canvas, or is this just the wall of this building? Oh, it's like a projector screen, like this. View satellite camera. This projector is linked to our Sky Shutter satellite, which is currently orbiting Timberhearth. The satellite is going with two or more cameras. See if you can take a snapshot of our village. I right, see. So we can take screenshots as it orbits. Oh, something took off. And the rear view... Oh, there's a behind. I see. Oh, that appears to be us. Hello. Our planet's very small. It's kind of cute, though. Otherwise, we just have some models and things. Marl. So it's launch day, huh? How's it gonna miss you? Speaking of launch day, I was thinking about it, and the platform those ships launch from is getting old. Isn't it about time you built a new, less flammable one? Hey, it was made of wood, wasn't it? That big tree in the village would be the perfect choice. I wouldn't mind helping out the space program, just say the word. <laughs> the launch plat pad is flammable? Ha, <laughs> you didn't realize that? Don't worry, it's held up for all the launches so far. It'll definitely be fine for yours. Probably. Yeah, sorry, what, what is our launch pad? It's that, huh? That's very exciting. Nice. Hello there, space cadet. I hear you're leaving the crater today. If you meet any of the other travelers up there, remind them to take proper care of their instruments, won't you? Tell me about the traveler's instruments. Oh, sure. I meant all of their instruments, you know. Let me see. There's Chert's drums, Rybik's banjo, and Gabro's flute. I'm going to play. Okay. And Feldspar's harmonica, of course, though. Feldspar's missing for a long time. Ah, uh, has it? Sometimes it feels like just yesterday they were playing their harmonica around the campfire. Ah, uh, do we tend to go by they for this species? Okay. Cool, cool. Just put note here. Anyway, you hear music in space, that'll be one of the space program's other travelers. Do I get my own instrument? 
I hope so. If you feel like company, you can always pull out your signal scope and track them down. Uh, can I? I haven't tried pressing other buttons. Oh! Alright. Is that that? Oh yeah, Outer Wild Adventures. So the accordion, yeah? I assume it's not another planet, but it's 274 meters away. It's this red one. Oh, there's two different red ones. Oh, three different red ones. That's the banjo, and it's coming in fast. Ah, is he... or they... on this planet? Okay. And what's this other one? Can't look up that high, but maybe they're on that planet. <laughs> oh, and this other white one's getting close. Oh. Alright, there's some whistling. These planets are very small and very close together. This is concerning. Like, 700 meters away, like, a few blocks down the street. Ah, oh, look at this harmonic convergence. Trouble is, every time a Hathian leaves outer space, that's one less musician in our orchestra. So, did you need something? Take care of yourself up in space. Tefra and Galena. Hello, astronaut. This is my favorite troublemaker. I assume these are kids. Okay, yeah. We wanted to play hide and seek, but Moraine won't let us borrow their signal scope because it's really delicate and not supposed to be thrown around like that. Hey, hey, can we use your signal scope? Can we? Can we please? We'll even let you be it. Yeah, let's be it. Yeah, let's play. Woohoo! Okay, here are the rules. Galena and me will hide all well, we'll hide with these radios and we'll use your signal scope to find us. You'll use your signal scope. I'll use my signal scope. Last one to be found wins. Okay, close your eyes and start counting. Oh, cool. Yes, I do in fact have four eyes. Oh, I see. We've got different frequency channels. Okay, hide and seek frequency. Something there. And something there. Appears to be one. Ah, oh, you found me? My hiding spot was super good. You're like lit up behind a waterfall. Don't forget, you have to find both of us, okay? Oh, no. I can't jump that high. I'm in the water now. If I come around and onto that house. Okay. Yeah. It's going enough. I won. I'm happy. Thanks for playing with us. Why is your font so small? 
All right. So let's see, we went past Nice, up towards the observatory, past the kids, those Tef, the Tefra and Delena? Is that right? Yeah. Ah, Spinel! It wouldn't be a game without Spinel. Fishing rhyme, fishing rhyme, singing helps me pass the time. You're leaving the crater? Guess we'll all be a little busier without you around to lend a hand. That big water planet, Giant's Deep, that's where I'd go. Why is that? One time, after the rest of the village had left to sleep, it was just the two of us sitting around the campfire. Gabriel told me about their first trip to Giant's Deep. They landed the ship easily enough in the waves, but couldn't see too far down on account of how murky the water was, I guess. Too dark. Gabra wants to see what lay beneath the surface, they decided to travel deeper. They traveled down and down, but suddenly Gabra couldn't go any further. Uh, that's the thing I know about the current? I'll tell you more. <laughs> I will. I was just pausing dramatically. As though exercising a will of its own, the water was refusing to let Gabra go any deeper. It held Gabra back, almost as if it were trying to protect them from something. And then, in the terrible darkness, Gabra saw it. The tentacle of some hideous beast! Was there sap wine involved during Gabra's campfire story? <laughs> Come to think of it, don't you have somewhere you should be exploring that isn't here? <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Okay, observatory and zero GK. So what, what was the planet called? Like Giant's Deep or something? Okay. Uh, it's observatory, it's the Zero GK. What's this notice? Hey, come to have your old flight coach before your launch. I've got Zero G training set up if you want a refresher. Gossam. Alright, could be useful. And what's this all about? Danger! Inside this fence is a pocket of ghost matter! A strange and dangerous substance that's invisible to the naked eyes. The good news is you can detect ghost matter with a camera. Moving through ghost matter is uniquely painful and will probably kill you. Don't complain to me if you hurt yourself fooling around. Horn fouls. Uh, do I have a camera? I haven't pressed my buttons yet. F. Oh, flashlight. G H J K L Z X C N V. Right. Arcos. Hi, astronaut. You know the patch of ghost matter inside this fence? Gossam said it used to be bigger when they were a hatchling. Guess ghost matter evaporates. It just takes a s s s s ooh. Oh, I see. I wasn't stuttering. It was super long time to go away. I hope there's still ghost matter in the village. I'm a grown up. Ghost matter is awesome. Hmm. Oh, we have something called Tektite. That's very. Given this game already is like Majora's Mask adjacent, having Tektite is cute. Ghost matter is super cool. It'll burn the heck out of you. Yeah, I heard touching it hurts so bad you feel like your whole hand's on fire. Try not to walk in Danny in space, okay? That sounds bad and painful. Can I? Ah. Evil ghost matter. <laughs> So what this green stuff is, is... I feel like taking pictures is gonna be a, something in this game. Alright. Good to know about. Try not to die to any ghost matter in space. I saw smoke coming from Youngbark Crater up north and figured I should check it out. You can use the scout launcher, please just don't break it while I'm gone. Tech tech. The one who lost a foot, right? East Nomai Ruins. South Quantum Grove Crater. Northwest the Geyser Mountains. 
And north, the Young Bark Crater. Alright, yeah, okay. Scout Launcher. Ah, I see. Very much like the probe that we have orbiting the planet, but I guess it doesn't go into orbit. Oh. Also, is that is that the debris of that like spaceship that got hit at the beginning? So the yellow piece. We go in this direction. Are these the geyser mountains? Oh, okay. Some some cool crater. This is the no oh this is North Park crater, okay. This is the No My Ruins off this way. Oop, oops. Just trying to hold it down to keep getting a Images. Alright, I guess those are the Nomai ruins. Oh, I landed inside a little henge. And what's this way? Was this like the quantum crater or something? Oops, hit a tree. Alright. Bit of a sense of our planet's geography. Ah, Moraine. Moraine's the one that didn't want the kids playing with the signal scope. Looks like they've got a scope of their own. Hmm. Oh, hello, astronaut. This is good weather for your launch, right? That's lucky. What are you up to? I'm using my signal scope to pick up sound from distant planets. I guess we all just have janky signal scopes, huh? It's set to the Outer Wilds Venture Frequency so I can pick up the Traveler's music. Last night I heard a Rybex banjo coming from Brittle Hollow. I hope that means they're safe. I assume the banjo won't play itself. I can hear different planets, too. It depends what time of day or night it is. It's different planets from the sky at different times. Signal scopes are cool. True. I see that's Rybeck's banjo. Oh. And the whistling is there too. Yeah, I like how that thing works. The music in this game is pretty cool so far. Gossam, he is missing an eye. Or they are missing an eye. Hey, I thought I might see you before the big lunch. Nerves getting the better of you? <laughs> you kidding? I'm a natural at those. Is that so? Funny, I seem to recall the first time you strapped on a jetpack, we had to come fish out of the crater near the South Pole. So listen, there's a satellite, which is definitely not just a piece of broken mining equipment, set up down in the Zero G cave and need of repairs. Looking for a little last-minute zero-g practice, head down the lift into the cave. Or don't, as long as you're confident you can make ship repairs in space. Alright, one repair satellite coming up. Cool, get to it and try not to concuss yourself right before your first launch. It's like being on Space Mountain at Disneyland. Ah. Alright, my flashlight. Legs behind me, but okay. Oh. Maybe not zero G, but it feels like it's low G. Whee! 
Ah, hello. Let's say ba Bajo Continuo. Not good at words. Yes, I have just started. Okay, so not, not zero G, just low, low G. Just like the model plane, we have the same kinds of thrust. Alright. Is spacebar still... Okay, we still have a jump as well. We do have limited fuel. Hey, hey, nice of you to drop down. I'm getting some zero, deeps, zero G time in. So you're going in there? In the cave? Hmm. <laughs> what? No, I'm fine. Great. Great, I'm fine. You don't look fine. Well, you know, I hate that cave. I don't know why you make me talk about it. <laughs> nah, I've got hand sweats. <laughs> Thank you. And let me know uh, how audio balances. Uh, if you think either me or the game should be louder at all, that would be good to know. I tried to do a bit of a test beforehand, but hopefully it'll be okay. Uh, I was told not to get the DLC until after finishing the game. We. Oh, excited. Ah, space to match velocity. Oh, that's actually very handy. Okay. Now it feels like we're in proper zero G. Oh, I'm just gonna bend these steel beams together with my bare hands and duct tape. Nice. All right. <laughs> I like games that have actually good space physics that don't have, uh, like, friction in space. Oh, thank you for the follow. Now, where is the other one? the damage. Inside? Ah. Nice. We just exit out the back, shall I? I guess I may be doing some space repairs in my future. Woohoo! Back on uh, dry land, as it were. What's this? Cannot use. Where's the miner? The miner's up there. I fixed the thing. Hey, you're back. You need something? Guess where I'm going today. <laughs> oh, no. No. No, no, no. No way. You want to rock into space? That's your business. But don't make me, you know, think about it. Bad enough, I got this weird cave down here. Uh, I'm like, he's both claustrophobic and agoraphobic. It's very unfortunate. Oh, do I get to, like, take my spacesuit with me now? Opening down this corridor? 
Uh, same. Wait, same corridor? Maybe. Ah. Uh, they don't let me keep my space suit. I did it! Nicely done. Of course, it'll be a little more stressful when you're hurtling through space, but just remember you're training and trying to hit anything big. I'll do my best. I see you to get off this rock, so go get the launch codes from the observatory and get out of here already. Best of luck out there, and hey, try to avoid getting yourself killed now that I put so much time into training you, got it? I will do my best. And the observatory is... this away? Zoom in there. What's down here? Oh, back to the launch tower. Okay. Which is where we started. <clears throat> Outer Wilds Ventures founding members. Click on the top left. Okay, that's Hornfels, Gossen, Slight, and Feldspar. Gossen before he lost an eye, I suppose? Wait, who's Esker? Esker is not mentioned. Oh, is Esker the one taking the picture? So I think this is Feldspar, the one who's missing? Okay. Big thanks to these additional founding members of Wild Ventures, without whom we've never gotten off the ground. And I assume this is... That's where we do our, uh, Patreon. Alright. Thank you, Patreon people. Or not Patreon, uh, Kickstarter, I guess. Outer Wilds Ventures, Timber Hearth's first and only space program. Oh, we are Timber Hearth. Um, thus, we are the Hearthians. It was founded to explore the farthest reaches of our solar system. Feldspar was the first Hearthian to be intentionally launched into space. They completed the first orbit around Timber Hearth and later made the first of what would be many landings on our moon, the Atoll Rock. Alright. Is that the moon that's like 200 meters away? <laughs> Hey, hey, it's my favorite astronaut. Launch day of last, huh, buddy? It's the Translator Tools inaugural flight, too. I'm so excited, it's making me nauseous. Just think, you'll be able to translate any Nomai text you want, anywhere you are. Okay, there was those Nomai ruins across, so, okay. Is that our, our mystical, missing species race that every game needs? The two of us put a lot of hours into inventing that tool, so don't break it, okay? Haha, <laughs> jeez, do, do not break it. Uh, ignore me, okay? I'm just nervous. I'm not even the one going into space. How are you feeling? I'm excited. Good, you've only been waiting for this day since we were hatchlings. I can't wait to see all your training pay off. So what's the dirt? You here to see the Nomai statue? The new Nomai statue? Uh, sure. New statue. You haven't heard? Gabbro brought it back with him from Giant Steep. Ah, it's the water planet. And Hornfell's just finished prepping it for display. This is it right here. Neat, huh? Makes me wish we could see what a real live Nomai looks like, but I guess this is as close as we'll ever get. Check it out. It looks like they had fur. Fur is weird. This is the first fully intact statue ever found, you know? And for how old it is, it's in great shape. Ah, uh, jeez, I guess it got a little carried away there. Go on, you have a ship to launch. Take care of yourself out there, you hear? They have very long necks. I see, this species has three eyes instead of four. This remarkably intact statue was carved by the Nomai, an ancient species who dwelled in our solar system thousands of years ago. The statue provides us with our most detailed look yet at the Nomai, who appear to have been car covered with a layer of fur. Yeah, it's very, very gamer posture from the Nomai. Just... <laughs> Note the decorative jewelry has been carved as part of the antlers. Oh, it has it. Although their artifacts and structures have been found on almost every planet in this solar system, we still have no idea where the species came from or what happened to them. Antlers? Can I jump on your cool statue? Oh, I see, yeah, is this... Oh, is antlers, like, on the sides as well? 
Is there jewelry carved into the antlers? I guess I don't see that, but all right. Oh, nice. Oh, you're right. The museum does have lots of stuff. Coming soon. Future site of our next exhibit. If you've enjoyed our time with Outer Wilds, please consider supporting our planned museum expansion. Uh, our quest to explore the furthest reaches of the solar system wouldn't be possible without generous visitors like you. We thank you profusely for your support. We hope to see you again soon. Okay, that suggests I'm supposed to go around in this direction. Oh, translate. This piece of Nomai writing was essential to deciphering their unique language. Although this text is linear, Nomai text often branches off from a central point. Interestingly, each branch tends to be written by a different author. This is our new translator tool. Ah, Kasava. We're nearly ready. Felix and I have finished construction, and she says calibrating the device won't take long. Alright, so the Nomai have gender. Though the, uh, the hearthlings appear not to. Fortunately, the Adel Rock's lack of atmosphere will make calibration simple. After all this time, I'm thrilled to finally resume our search. Hey, I like the, uh, how it follows the line. Okay, so the Adel Rock was like a no my word for this moon. Or, or maybe not. I guess we don't know how much this is like localized translation. Aside from the dwellings and structures they built, the Nomai also made art. This decorated pottery was discovered on Brittle Hollow. Some ancient Nomai art depicts strange animals, foreign celestial objects, and other subjects that can't be found in our solar system, which makes us wonder that the Nomai originated elsewhere in the universe or simply had vibrant imaginations. Were the Nomai born in our solar system? Or were they born among other stars and planets? And if they were, how and why did they come here? These are just some of the questions we hope to answer through further xenoarchaeological expeditions. <clears throat> Alright, it's a, it's a pot. It's like two-headed animal, or...? Oh, it's got the same kind of antler structure as the Nomai. Is Nomai skeleton? It is? What you see here are parts of the Nomai skeleton. We can tell from their skulls that they possess antlers and, quite unusually, only three eyes. True weirdos. The Nomai body was most likely adapted for living exclusively on land. The differences in the Nomai's anatomy, such as their shockingly fragile bone structure, show us that Harthians couldn't have descended from Nomian ancestors. Alright, believable. It's not clear where the Nomai originated from or why they disappeared. We hope to find more clues to this puzzle as we explore the solar system. Okay, it's good to know that we have uh, very firm bones, as you might uh, <laughs> take some beatings. Alright, little lander. It's like the little lander I, I drove. With uh, whatever that is. The Nomai technology brought back from space by our astronauts has been a great boon to Outer Wilds ventures, allowing us to modify expedition gear in exciting and useful ways. For example, the Little Scout now boasts a warp retrieval capability. Ah, okay, that's me recalling the, the Scout. That makes sense. It allows astronauts to recall their scouts almost instantly. This has dramatically reduced the number of scouts lost to the depth of space. Right, we used to have some some kind of warp technology. Uh, oh, sorry, is this the exhibit? I was trying to look at this ramp and I'm like, it's wood. This crystal was taken from a Nomai ruin on Brittle Hollow. It seems to create a local gravity distortion and was most likely used to traverse steep surfaces. Try it out. Ah, oh, interactive art. Oh. Indeed. My, uh, okay, they weren't kidding about local. Okay, can I walk up this wall? No, but I can walk on this surface. Hey. This would make Tony Hawk pretty exciting if, like, oh, let me do this cool gap. <laughs> Alright. Oh, an anglerfish. Hello. Oh, they even call it an anglerfish. Alright. 
<laughs> this anglerfish specimen was found attached to the landing gear of one of our ships that flew close to Dark Bramble. Haven't heard of that yet. It appears well suited to living in dark places with minimal atmosphere. Alright. Oh, this solar system diagram could be useful. Oh, we saw the Nomai ruins when we flew over them. I assume that's that. And not sure about that. Oh, same. Uh, there's no description here. This still looks like it's on a timber hearth. I guess. But those are the Nomai ruins on timber hearth, I think. Alright, we have planets ranging from small to big to explosion. Oh, maybe this is the life of a star. Maybe this isn't a... Maybe this isn't a solar system. Ah, yeah, okay. Stars like our sun generate light and heat by fusing hydrogen into helium. As it grows older, the star runs out of hydrogen and starts to contract. Oh, this can be death of the star. As the star's core contracts, it gets hotter, causing the outer layers to expand. The star has become a red giant. When the core is hot enough, it starts to fuse helium into carbon. And all the way down into lead until we supernova. If a star is massive enough, it will continue to fuse carbon into even heavier elements, like iron. Ultimately, the star will collapse under its own gravity, and then explode in a violent event called a supernova. Based on Chert's observations, this will one day be the fate of our own sun. Cool. We don't have a wimpy sun like a... Like our own solar system, we're going to the cool suns. Okay. Balls. Slowly rotating balls. Can I push them? Whee! Thud. Watch closely, these balls move on their own. Oh. <laughs> ah, that's true. They were moving a little bit. Oh yeah, they're moving back this way. The ground is perfectly level, so what do you think causes this spooky motion? The answer is the moon. As it orbits our planet, the outer rock's gravity pulls on objects from different directions. In fact, it's pulling on you right now. Given how close the moon is, it's like 600 meters away or something. If it has this much gravitational force, it seems like it'd be really hard to just like have objects on your desk without them, like, getting pulled off by the moon's gravity. <laughs> okay. And here we have cool rock. Swiss cheese rock. The strange rock moving around in this grotto appears to react to conscious observation. Oh. The level-headed among us realize there must be some sort of optical illusion at play, but Gabra claims that the rock exists in all possible states until it's observed, whatever that means. Whatever is actually happening, both sides of the debate agree the effect is extremely creepy. Ah. <laughs> oh, if I, if I hide the rock, but I can't hide these two, it can't move. But as soon as I do, like... If I... Do that... Oh, this reminds me of a, um, a game I played on the Gear VR a while back. I forgot what it was called. It wasn't, not Land's End. Uh, it was kind of like an escape room game sort of thing, but it, it did make a lot of use of trolling you by moving things around whenever they were off screen. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I like how the physics in this are both uh, very realistic for not having space friction. But then it's like, there's huge gravitational pulls on an object that's 600 meters away. Which suggests it's incredibly dense. Which, I mean, I guess I guess is a possibility. Oh, there's the actual, like, orrery that I wanted. Okay. Oh. Aha. Uh -huh. Alright, so we have Timble, Timber Hearth and the Adult Rock. Okay, we've heard about Brittle Hollow, we've heard about Giant's Deep, we've heard about Dark Bramble. I can zoom. 
Oh, what's up there? What are you? Are you an unknown object? Just... Okay. There's some perpendicularly orbiting thing. And we have the hourglass twins really close by. What's... Ash twin and ember twin. Those are indeed very, very close. What's following along with them? Oh, uh, there's some orbit happening really close to the sun. Oh, uh, yep. Oh, uh, is that like the space station thing that we saw that exploded? Also, is this real time? It did look like things were orbiting very fast, so. Okay. Oh yeah, where's the little planet that was next to the twins? Where did that go? Where did that go? Okay, we have Timber Hearth, and we have our moon, the Atoll Rock. Uh, our ship is awaiting launch. Oh, it's just a satellite orbiting Timber Hearth. And Brittle Hollow has its own mountain, Hollow's Lantern. Oh, no, this is the spaceship thing that we saw. When we woke up, we saw a green planet. So we saw this thing, like, get hit by a rock or something. And a bit fell off. And that was the large green planet Giant's Deep, which I guess has... Maybe, like, I guess it's gaseous, but, like, a solid core, because... Was it Gabbro? I forget, I tried to explore it and couldn't get any further. Oh, and we have a... A mystery point of light that appears to be warping space around it over here. Okay. Dark Bramble does not appear to be in good shape. Oh, I see. It's like a tree grew out of the core of the planet. Oh, sorry, you confirmed it's real time. Okay, yeah. That's handy. I feel like I'm playing a... Uh, plotting missions in a Cabal space program now. Okay, and then, yeah, whatever whatever this thing is that's orbiting over here. Okay, so we have mystery red object orbiting perpendicularly, and we've got, like, mystery white object, which is, like, static, right? It's not even moving. That's exciting. Okay. Hourglass Twins, Timber Hearth, Brittle Hollow, Giant's Deep, Dark Bramble. Oh, look at this convergence. Oh, okay, that little white dot is actually an, an item on this map as well. Right? Oh, but it has, they've carved a really weird orbit for it. Interesting. Alright, I assume this is Hornfelds. Let's see what else is over here. Hornfelds observations. This is incredible. At first I thought the points of light in this image were stars, but they're not. They're galaxies. And this image covers just a tiny patch of the whole sky, which means the universe contains at least a thousand times more galaxies than we previously imagined. Neat. Uh, I think I need to sit down. Hmm, this is odd. According to my redshift calculations, every single galaxy in this image is moving away from us. Ah yes, he's going to discover the Big Bang. In fact, the farther away a galaxy is, the faster it appears to be moving away. Oh, is that is that true in our universe? Um, everything is moving away from everything, essentially. But is it moving away faster the further away it is? I'm not sure. Ah, <laughs> it's almost as if the entire universe is expanding. True. But if that's true... Was there everything closer together in the past? And how far back can we extrapolate? Did the universe have a beginning? Alright. True. True. Good way of figuring that out. Oh. Yeah, it's cool whenever there's a... Whenever there's like a cool convergence of all the planets. Yes. The... Yeah, I've never like felt super comfortable with the uh, surface of a balloon inflating metaphor for the universe, I guess, but... Like, yeah, what is what is beyond space, if not space? 
but physicists seem to seem to think it's a useful metaphor, so I'll trust that. Uh, that's right. Is this Hornfell? I didn't actually see it, but I assume so. It looks like the person in the picture. Well, they all kind of look very similar, but... There you are. I've just finished pre-flight observations, and local conditions are good. Time to get our newest astronaut off the ground. And you'll be our first astronaut ever equipped with the Nomai Translator tool. I confess I've been giddy all day just thinking about it. We're better equipped than ever to unravel the mysteries of the Nomai. You and Hal should be very proud of your work. I guess Hal is our childhood friend who made the tool. What's your plan once you're in space? No. I don't know. But, uh, oh yeah, let's start with something small. I think I'll start with something small. <laughs> you prefer to ease into things. That's a sensible plan. More sensible than most of our astronauts tend to be, and that's a fact. Do you think you'll go to the Adelrock, then? Our moon would be a safe place to travel to and get your bearings in space, and I'm sure Esker would appreciate the visit. Okay, I think Esker was the photographer of that picture. Plus, we don't know what the ancient Nomai ruins on the moon are, or why they were built. You could put your new translator tool through its paces. Shouldn't I start with the Nomai ruins that are on this planet? Well, then it looks like all that's left is to send you off. All in all, it's a fine day for a lunch. <laughs> I'm ready to die in space. I'm not one for superstition, but isn't that kind of unlucky to say before a launch? At any rate, here are the launch codes. Try not to worry too much. Our ships are every bit as safe as Slate could be persuaded to make them. Neat. Best of luck out there, and let me know if I can help you with anything. Ah, uh, yes. The dash dash pipe dash dot dot pipe dash dot. My favorite launch code. That's right, this was Hornfells. This was Hornfells. Okay. Alright. We have our launch codes. A uh, bird? What kind of bird? Oh, hello. I'm sure that's a very normal thing to have happen. Ah. Oh, those lightning boats are like the know my text. Hm. I forget. Oh, these eyes weren't open before, right? I don't think. Uh, earthquake. Alright. Thanks for recording my memories. I guess. Oh yeah, where'd Hal go? Which way the launch tower? Launch tower. Oh, there's Hal. Oh. Hey, hey, so you got a good look at that Nomai statue? I, I did. Yeah, the statue looked at me and opened its eyes. Whoa, whoa, the statue was doing what? So its eyes opened and then you saw images from your own memories and glowing lights flying around? You mean like a hallucination? Listen, no offense, but are you sure you're okay to launch, like, medically speaking? Mm, yeah, yeah, you know, don't worry about it. <laughs> Maybe you should sit down for a bit and take it easy. I'd hate for anything bad to happen if you tried to launch while you're not feeling great. But hey, when you are ready, then you can make the most of our translator tool. Can't believe it's all grown up and leaving for space already. For real, though, I'm glad you're the one carrying it, not like Ryback. They'd fall on it for sure. So Ryback's one with the banjo? Say, if you want to do a short trip just to get your space legs under you, you can check out the ruins on the Adel Rock. I'd love to learn what those are. Good luck and safe flying. Why is there want me to go to Adel Rock when there's ruins on our planet? I want to go to the ones on our planet first. Ah, some logs. Oh. I found the log elevator. Oh, Tepper. Hello, astronaut! Are you going to space today? Are you going to space never coming back like Feldspar did? <laughs> Uh, really? But this is the first area, so we explore it first. <laughs> also, yeah, what what kind of bird? Uh, that's pretty disturbing. 
But Hornfell says no one knows what happened to Feldspar. Hornfell says they got lost in space even though they were the best pilot ever. You're not as good as Feldspar, so you should be really careful not to get lost. Thanks, kid. One vote of confidence for me. Ah, uh, nice. I used to have cockatiels growing up. I do quite like cockatiels and cockatoos. Uh, <laughs> it's fun to have multiple cockatiels and like, see the differences in their personalities and things. We had one that was like, very adventurous and would just run around the house and the other two would like, follow it along like it was the leader. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh no. I hope it can stand okay. Especially since they seem to like to stand on one foot and then, like, switch feet. <laughs> Alright. Oh uh, yeah, I mean like a. Uh, I grew up in in British Columbia. It's got it's got some pretty good forests like this. Could definitely have an aviator. All right, uh, let's go cool. warp into our into our ship. Oxygen refill. Spot a tree. Walk towards it. Okay. Let's have our controls. A little scout oh suit it seems sure it seems like I should put my space suit on right ah see beyond the horizon illuminate dark areas detect hazards test the environment oh oh is this gonna be um giant's deep it looks like it oh and this looks like the 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 northburn crater area that's on fire <laughs> okay Okay, I can repair myself. I've got cans. Oh, did I just grab the scout launcher when I put the suit in? Okay. Oh, there we go. It's twins, Little Rock, Brittle Hollow of Hollow's Lantern, Giant Steep. Oh, the Interloper. Is that that red, that red planet that goes along perpendicularly? And then they have that little white dot. Okay. Chip log. Ah, Ember Twin, Ash Twin. Village. One only Hearthian Village. Zero G Cave. I did indeed repair the Astronaut. Oh. Rumor Mode. Uh, right, we learned the Esker was on Adelrock. And on Adelrock there's some Nomai stuff. Okay, if we go to a map, it'll like show us what it is. I guess. Okay, little hollow, giant steep, dark bramble, interloper. Alright, I like this. Is that one of those gravity crystals? Oh, maybe? Is that why we have gravity so heavy in the ship? If I just burn fuel like this, my fuel goes down. But I can refuel. Hopefully infinitely, I guess we'll find out. Alright. Uh, okay, down camera for lift off and landing. Oh, I can see the map. Cool. Oh no, that's the interloper. Oh, I see. It's not the red, the big red planet. It's like... A totally different thing. Oh, it's a comet. Okay. And it has a very, like, parabolic orbit around the sun. It gets very close. Okay. Can I lock onto this thing? I want to know more about white dot. Probably not. And can I also not find out about red dot? Okay. Oop. Left off. We. Aha! Hello.
All right, yeah, I'll try not to die in space like Feldspire. Okay. But actually, I really want to find the Nomai Ruins on this planet. <laughs> Why would I die? I'm a careful person. So that's the village. Oh, there's the Nomai Ruins. Okay. Let's... I have just lifted off. I have talked to everyone in town, I think. Uh, can I go into landing mode? Okay. Yeah, like I said, I was going to talk to people in town. <laughs> okay, I've got like a landing meter on the uh, right-hand side. Okay. Oop. Oh, I see. The green is like ground level, I guess. Actually, I'm not sure what the three to five lower levels of tape are on that, but okay. All right. Space is cool and all, but uh, I guess I don't need my suit if I'm on Timber Heart. I guess. <laughs> yeah, when it said 200 meters away, I didn't expect the ground to suddenly be there, but it's just like 200 meters to the center of the planet. <laughs> Where's my gun? All right, cool DNA pot. Are you a clock? Oh yeah, do I, oh, do I have my translator tool even if I don't have the suit on, right? Okay. Uh, all right, we've got cool glowing lights. Meat. Different patterns of diamonds and stuff. Oh, that's like one of the lights that was in the, uh, when they were describing how the, like, the warp drive thing worked. Uh, maybe they don't care about these ruins because there's no text on these ruins. I like their cool clock, though. How do I get inside? Oh, right. If I had the suit, I'd have the jump pack, wouldn't I? That certainly would be helpful. Okay, maybe I should have put the suit on. <laughs> okay, I guess they had ruins, but they just, like, weren't cool ruins. Is there an easy way to tell, like, where my ship is using the signal scope or anything? In case I lose my ship. <laughs> my suit on. <laughs> it looks like it would make exploring quite a lot easier. Not so you have like a run or a walk button or a crouch or anything. Okay. I like my cool beam me up effect. Alright, alright. Suit. Oh yeah, it's got a map. That's useful. Oh, okay. I guess the jetpack's not very good. Oh, there's the interloper. Hello. Okay, I guess the uh the jetpack's not very good at this level of gravity, huh? Oh, I see. Yeah, it boosted. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Alright. Ugh. Ow. Fud. I guess there may be fall damage in this game. Thank you. 
do do. Oh, the map shows me like the track I've followed. All right, cool door. Hey, that looks like text. Let's go. Mining site 2B. Oh. Gonna use my mind. That's cool. I'm like, are these not my runes? Dead no mind. Cool tunnels. Uh. Oop. Ah. <laughs> okay, it shows me where my ship is. That's good. Is this just the zero G cave? Did I just fall into the zero G cave from another direction? Oh, interesting. Oxygen's actually being used down here. Can I... Oh. Oh, am I in water? Oh, that was happening. Okay, that was like a lake. Go in the cool stream. We let's go up. Woohoo! Oh, <laughs> yeah. I imagine VR for this could be pretty legit. Too close. Move scroll. Still amazed by how much ore the Ash Twin project requires. Isn't this the ore for the remaining towers being built on the Ash Twin? The completed towers I've seen are quite large. No, the material for those towers is all being taken from Ash Twin. The ore mining here will be used to craft a immensely thick protective shell to physically seal off the chamber inside Ash Twin's core. The Millie Fire Clan's decision to use Timber Hearth's ore only for the constructing the shell. If eventually life on this planet were to evolve to the point of advanced metallurgy, I'm confident it would have destroyed their ability to create. Thanks! We have indeed been able to metallurge. They're sealing off all entrances. I hope they've planned accordingly. <laughs> I thought you had forbidden your apprentice from making puns, Coleus. How else could he improve? Okay, I'm not sure why I would want to take the scroll yet. But I guess I can hold it. Ooh. Oh, let's be putting it away. Alright, let's get launcher, I forgot. Put away. I can put it on a table. Yeah, I don't know what VR systems they they have for this. Already holding scroll. I'll put the scroll on a table. Ash twin projection stone. times. Yeah, it's like a warp to these places. Uh, 
more like a way to fall off a cliff. Alright, not totally sure what that's about. <laughs> more dead nomai. Oh yeah, I guess that's the Timber Hearth symbol, huh? Oh, okay. My gratitude for the latest shipment I know. This ore should be the last one we need for the Ash Twin Project. That one's in red. Once we finish the shell that seals up the central chamber, we'll check to ensure there's no longer any physical entrances. Right now I'll be checking the interior and the x-ray for cracks. This is exciting news. Can I offer an extra set of eyes to this final check? If my work here is complete, I'd be delighted to help. It'd be grateful if you would. The more eyes, the better, as the smallest flaw or opening in the shell that protects the Ashman Project could lead to disaster. This is like a way to read the stone. Seems to be very exit only. Doesn't want me to go further. Alright, can I go down? Yeah, it very much goes in this direction. Okay. How to find my ship? Vaguely in this direction, I guess. Ugh. Lots of hot water. to get down to like what could be an exit down there maybe Ow. Uh, I probably actually like taken damage I guess the red <laughs> the red body is hurt <laughs> Eventually, I'll get out of this cave. How did I get into this cave? I just fell, right? Oh, that looks like an exit. Can we make it? Ugh. Alright. Oh, right. I came in through the... The door, of course. Alright, alright. Is that water going up? Oh, here's the steam.
All right, now we can explore space, maybe. Can't see. I'm wet. I feel like that bridge that I have had. Let me. Yeah. Let's get the med kitted all up. Oh, that looks ungood. <laughs> Lol. I am at least aware of the uh, Majora's Mask esque mechanic. 